brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. Hop it in. Welcome back to Healthy Living. Tonight we are talking about running injuries. Now running injuries usually occur when you push yourself too hard. And joining me now is Express Care's Dr. Yikka Lam. Welcome, Hi, Doc. Hi. So let's start off with explaining what is runner's knee. Runner's knee is a common sensation that people will get of pain in the front of the knee, um, right behind the kneecap, especially when they're doing stairs or when they're doing long distance running, they'll start to get a grinding feeling and pain behind the kneecap and sometimes it'll swell as well. Usually this is because of the quadriceps, the muscle up here, not actually being strong enough, toned enough to hold that uh, kneecap, which is like a pulley system in place. So the, the treatment for that one is to slow down on your distance, try not to do as many stairs and work on strengthening your quads. All right, now what is a stress fracture? Stress fractures are tiny micro fractures, meaning cracks in your bone. Typically they occur in the tibia, which is the long bone of the shin. And they occur again from, from repetitive injury, people harding, running on hard pavements um, or um, with shoes that are not shock absorbing um, or the pe person is really just too heavy to be doing that kind of exercise at this time. Um, so they can become very painful and uh, actually require people to get casted at times. All right. Now, um, there's another injury, I guess, um, the shin splint. Uh, what would be the ideal treatment? Shin splints, again, are pain in the front of the, of the tibia. Um, so, so not all shin splints are microfractures. They are, they're basically an overuse injury, though. You know, the muscles that we have are attached to the to long bone of the leg, that's the tibia. And as you are running and exercising, if those muscles are not strong enough to, to absorb the shock, they're gonna start pulling and tugging on the, on the actual bone. And then the bone can become inflamed or the lining around the bone can become inflamed. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can get the pain, but in the end, it becomes a very, very um, uh, tender and even swollen area on the front of your shin gets worse when you exercise, goes away when you rest. Now here's the hard part. People are trying to exercise and get fit, but they've got this pain and so it, it, it stops them from doing it. So you want to work up your exercise gradually. You don't want to suddenly jump into something and do, do an extreme activity, thinking ahead to New Year's resolutions. Just walk before you run. Okay. Now can you share with us what is Achilles tendonitis and how common is it? The Achilles tendon is on the back of your leg um, between your calf and your heel. It inserts into your heel and it's actually the biggest tendon in our body. Um, it becomes strained when we're again doing a lot of jumping like in basketball or climbing, um, doing hiking up hills or, or a lot of stairs, that kind of thing. Um, and also when we're using improper footwear. Um, Basically, the, the, the tendon can become very inflamed, thick and swollen, and you can start to get pain in the back of the heel. Um, it's really important that Achilles tendonitis be treated because if it's not, that inflammation continues as you're walking around, it gets worse and worse and worse until sometimes the tendon can rupture. And if it does rupture, then you require surgery to put it back together. So if you do have pain in the back of your calf or, or lower, lower down near your heel, that's one to ice, to take some Motrin and to lay off your exercise until it heals. Okay, now another injury that it can occur is plantar fasciitis. What is that? That's right. So the plantar fascia is the, the bottom, the sole of your foot. The fascia is a tight fibrous network that holds the foot in so that all your bones don't spill out onto the floor, okay? So it's like a tight little band, tight, tight tissue that holds all of the bones and muscles of the foot in. And they become tighter when people don't stretch their foot when they're wearing, again, improper footwear, um, certain activities, and it's, of course, weight gain. So basically what's happening is that the bottom of the foot becomes tight, then when you press down, it's trying to stretch, it hurts, it swells. So the treatment for that one, again, is ice and proper footwear. Ice, you'll be hearing that all day long because that's the most important thing you can do for any type of runner's injury. Okay, now it seems like runners can get a multitude of injuries. Yeah. Now, what can they do to prevent themselves from getting injuries such as that yeah or as those um, what stretches or you know 
prior to getting out there and jogging, what can they do to warm well, their bodies up? The stretching is really important. And before you stretch, you need to warm up your muscles. That's what um, you see on TV, the athletes are coming out in their warm up jackets and long pants, even though they're in a warm climate, because they want to keep their muscles warm. So you want to suit up. And if you don't want to suit up, at least walk for 10 or 15 minutes before you actually start your stretching. And the most important stretching is done actually after you exercise because at that point your muscles have already been through a workout, they've been stretched, they've been um, exercised, there might be areas of them that are tight and in spasm. And after you exercise, that's when you stretch, when your muscles are soft, to limber them up. Okay, can you show us some of the Let's stretches? do them. Okay, so prior to... Um, Start, let's see, you're walking a little bit and now you're going to start your run. So prior to that, we're going to do an overhead. We're first going to start by giving ourselves a hug. Let's give ourselves a hug and go from side to side. And that's going to help us. And we're going to stretch up overhead and take a big breath. And then we're going to reach back down and touch our toes. And what that's going to do is it's going to help our upper body stay nice and expanded so we can take big breaths and not get those tight um, pains, you know, the cramp in your side that you get when you run too hard. Then we're going to work on our lower body. Of course, these should be done slower, okay, about 30 seconds per stretch. Um, so we're going to stretch out our quadriceps. Okay. Okay, we're going to stretch it here in the front to make that I one loosen like up and help our groin. Yep. We're going to go side to side, reaching from side to side. And then we're also going to help stretch the front of the leg by doing that. And finally, don't forget about your ankles. You want to wiggle and twist them around. Put them up, put them down. Okay, you can feel that happening in the back of your calf and the front of your leg. These are simple exercises. I'm doing them very quickly. You can look them up on the internet for a, for a slower version. But it's really important that you do those again. Walk for 10 minutes, then stretch, then you do your run, and at the end, do your stretches again. All right, great. Okay. Thank you, Doc. You're welcome. Now, I know that shoes make a big difference they do. In, in injuries. So what, um, what's the perfect shoe? Real quick. Well, that's a tough one. The perfect shoe um, is the one that's perfect for you. <laughs> but one thing is people tend to wear the running shoes too long. You should replace your shoes about every six months or so if you're, if you're running uh, about 10 miles a week, okay? If every six months you should replace your shoes, and, and probably sooner if you're a very heavy person because you're, you're um, losing the shock absorbency of the shoe. It also depends on the pavement that you're running on. If you run, I mean, if you are running on pavement, or if you're running in the, um, uh, you know, on a softer terrain. Um, but you want, we want to choose a shoe that fits properly, that's ex a little bit bigger than your normal size, so that your toe doesn't crash into the top all the time and give you a blister, or a black toe. Um, Thanks, Doc. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Now, don't go anywhere. We're just getting started. When we return, Doc will take some of our viewers' questions.